All right, good morning. Harbor Light Church. So good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Especially you, Miss Evelyn. <laughs> Amen. It's nothing like, or it's, not, uh, I don't know. Having kids in the sanctuary is the best. Amen. You know, I mean, <laughs> yes, you're like, Pastor, you have four of them. That's probably why. But at the same time, just hearing them, because we understand and know as a church, that's the next generation. Amen. And we just need to be sowing into our children. A couple announcements this morning before getting right into it. We're going to be looking this morning for our intro verse, our introduction verse to prepare our hearts for worship this morning in Psalm 23. If you want to turn there in your Bibles, you're more than welcome to do that at this time. But just to remind you that tonight uh, at 6 p.m. we do have praise and worship night. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a good time together, good uh, crowd coming together in unity with our mission and vision is to pray for this church, pray for the area, and if uh, anybody has a need to pray for them, amen? And it's been a really good time. It's just a good time just to be in the spirit. I'll remind you that this Wednesday night, we're going to be continuing our membership class. And I just want to let everybody know it is for people that want to become members or people that are, are already members. Just to go over the basics as to how can you connect to the church. And that's going to be the, the main objective for it. And this coming Wednesday, we're going to be looking at the spiritual gifts inventory. You're going to take a test and you're going to say, hey, what areas did God create me to be of service of? Amen? Because everybody has their own unique gift. Amen? Are we awake this morning? Man, I feel like I'm just talking to two. <laughs> There's at least two in the end. The Bible says we're two or more gathered together. There I am in the midst. So just be thankful that his spirit is in this place. And also remind you that we have the Harbor Light Festival. Um, if you want to volunteer, which means put a trunk uh, yeah, put a trunk, put a, bring your car, make sure it's full of candy, and you can leave it in the parking lot if you'd like, right? But if you want to participate in the trunk of tree, uh, you're more than welcome to see me after service and just let me know. But as of right now, I think I've counted correctly, we have between six to eight people going to be putting in for that. And we're going to have a, a photo booth area with haze, and we're going to have paint, uh, paint a pumpkin. We're going to have, what is it, Bob for apples? What is that called? Uh, yeah, bob bobbing for apples, man. <laughs> Competition, and we're just going to have a good time in the house of the Lord, and that's this Saturday at 3 p.m. Uh, the event starts at 4, but if you want to put a, a trunk in, and if you want to put a trunk in the tree, just come at 3 o'clock so we can get you all set up. Amen? All right, let's go to the word of God this morning. Yes, Bev. Yes, yep, you are correct. Yep, so if you want to participate in the trunk or tree and you're like, Pastor Zach, I don't have money for candy, we will put candy, uh, we will give you candy, amen? So that way you can pass it out with us. Um, the main objective for this event is to provide a safe place for kids. I say families, but especially for kids, where they can just know of a place in their community that they can come to if they are in need or just come to to hang out, right? And we're going to take advantage of that time and we're going to share with them God's word. Amen? Amen? And we did have a good turnout last year. We did, we did. Psalm 23. I'm going to read the whole chapter this morning. It's in my professional opinion that Psalm 23 just gives us a sense of hope and security, and it reminds us of who we are, but it even reminds us of who he is, amen, amen. in our life. And the, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear 
no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. See, although sometimes in this life it seems like, all right, God, where are you? You know, where, where did you go? I just want to give somebody encouragement this morning. He hasn't left you. He is right by your side. He sees the valley of the shadow of death that you are going through, but he also is ready to equip you with his rod. Come on, and his staff that's going to comfort you. Amen. So, Father God, this morning, as we just fix our eyes upon you, as we see you this morning as the great shepherd, Father God, I just pray that your spirit just flows to this place. Lord God, as we just lift up the song, these songs that are on our heart to you, let our praise be ever so pleasing before your sight this morning. And Lord, if there's a need in the house, if somebody has come with just a burden, I pray, Lord God, that you just roll away those burdens off of their shoulders and allow them to experience the freedom that you want them to live each and every day by. And Lord God, we'll just be careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you are able to, let's stand during a time of worship. All throughout my history Faithfulness has walked beside me The winter storms make way for spring In every season from where I'm standing
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest I in my Savior am happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above Filled with His goodness, lost in His love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We just worship you this morning. We just give you all of our praise. Lord God, for you, you are worthy of our praise this morning. And Lord God, let us remember your name, Jesus, the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And we just give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. I always say, and you may be seated in the Lord's presence, I always say, come on, confess them on this side of glory, because you're going to have to on that side of glory anyways, amen? And I'd rather do it of my own free will, yeah. under the knowledge of what he's already done in my life. Could I have some ushers come forward this morning as we get ready to take up the offering? Now I want to remind you of a proverb this morning. Has anybody heard of proverbs from other theologians? Come on, I tell you, this is a proverb from God this morning. But if you ask yourself the question, how can I honor the Lord this morning? And there's many ways that you can honor the Lord. Thank you, Usher. Appreciate you being so faithful this morning. There's so many ways that we can honor the Lord. Coming into the house, gathering together in unity, lifting up his name is one way that we honor the Lord. By being a blessing in somebody else's life is another way that we can be honoring to the Lord. But this morning, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it says, another way that you can honor the Lord is with the substance and with the first fruits of all your Increase. So this morning as we take up our tithes and offerings, I just want to encourage you to continue to be faithful to God. Anything that comes in goes to the advancement of furthering the gospel right here in this community. And I can tell you what, I've seen them multiply nothing before into something. I've seen them take just a little tiny bit. So this morning, whatever he lays in your heart, Believe with me that he is going to use it to the advancement of his kingdom right here in Rockland, Maine. So, Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you have been so faithful to us even when we have failed you and haven't been so faithful back. But, Lord, this morning we just want to continue to honor you. And, Lord, I just pray that you just bless the gift and the giver this morning. In Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, amen. amen and amen. Let's continue in worship. We're small in number today, so let's sing right at the top of our voices to worship the Lord. We are never, never weary of the friend of song.
are some countries where you can't sing out loud in church. You have to do it very quietly because it, they'll take you off and take you to jail. Well, you know, as far as here in Rockland, Maine, <laughs> they haven't said that to us yet. So I'm going to sing and I'm going to shout. Praise, Praise the Lord. And you know, if, I, if they ever do tell us, Probably I'll be the first one going to jail because I can't keep quiet. I love the Lord this morning, and I want to sing, and I want people to know it. I don't want them to sit beside of me and say, you're a Christian? Never would have known it. I want to sing, and I want to shout. Praise the Lord. Because soon and very soon we are going. Oh, 
things now that are over there than there are here on this earth. And, you know, I want to be ready. I want to go. If he comes this rainy day, I have some loved ones that may not be ready to go, but I want him to come. I want him to take his children home. In this chorus, I have loved it for years, never sang it. I don't think I've ever sang it in church before. The new phrase that we're going to all learn today is see you in jail. <laughs> see you in jail. <laughs> Talk her way right out, would she? <laughs> oh, it's so, it's so good to see you in the house of the Lord, and it's so good just to laugh with one another. Amen. 
I'm pretty sure God has a pretty good sense of humor. I mean, just look around the room here this morning. <laughs> I'm all, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but he created you in the perfect image of him. Amen. And today, if you know him as your personal Lord and Savior, he calls you child of the King. Isn't that something remarkable? And as we continue our anchor series, as I drop all my props on the floor and I'm going to sweep right underneath the pulpit, I want us to focus on God's faithfulness. I'm going to string this out and I'm just going to leave it there for all intents and purposes so I don't forget to use my illustration. But I asked the first week that we started doing this, is what are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? And we looked at through scripture how if we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we should be holding on to him. We should be claiming every promise that he has given to us. But sometimes in this life, we find ourselves holding on to materialistic things, something that's going to satisfy us in that moment. And the challenge from that one was to hold on to something that was more eternal. Amen? Another week we looked at the differences of anchors. And we looked at depending on what terrain that you're in, what anchor to use. And we looked at how Jesus is like all the anchors combined. He is the perfect anchor. And then we looked at an anchor. How, how can we fasten ourselves in the midst of a storm, in the midst of, I, I always say, in the midst of just this life happening, this life uh, occurring, because if you're here this morning and, and you're doing great, praise the Lord. I'll pray that you continue to do great. But there's going to come a day where you are going to face a circumstance on this side of glory that's going to make you question what in the world am I doing? What am I holding on to? What, if, what, what, what do I have to really live for? Anybody ever? Come on, let's be honest this morning. What's going on, God? I thought you loved me. But this, the, today I want to wrap up the whole anchor series with one word. Remain. Remain. I believe remain is actually a verb used in our English language. And it's a, a verb. Everybody knows what a verb is. Something that shows action. See, a lot of the times we read the, or, or yeah, we read the word remain and it's like, all right, remain, stand by, you know, to be. And it's like, no, and I, look, I looked it up so that way I can sound pretty intelligent this morning. But it means to continue to exist. Continue to exist. And this morning as we turn in our Bibles to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I want us to understand how we can remain. What we are to do. But I believe as born again believers in, of Jesus Christ that there is roles and there's responsibilities for us all to have. There's instructions that's given to us through God's word that will teach you how to really polish your spiritual walk with him, how you can be with him at any given time. And a couple of questions I want you to ask yourself this morning is how's my attitude through what I'm going through? How are my actions? And am I representing Christ the way that I need to be representing him? Because like I said this morning already, God is so faithful. Amen. And that's the focus. That's going to be the focus on scripture this morning. How God is so faithful to us. He is so faithful to us. 
See, I remember, uh, well, if you don't know me by now, if you want to know my deep, dark secrets, you don't even have to ask. I just tell you all my all, right? But in my, back, in my backsliding days, right, I grew up in church. I knew what it meant to be good. I knew, I knew how to be a hellion, you know, after church and everything else, right? Really pray for me. Or people really did pray for me. But I remember in my backsliding days, right? I knew who God was. I knew Jesus Christ died for my sins, but I just wanted to experience the world, right? Does this kind of sound like the prodigal son, right? I just, I, come on. My parents said, don't do this, don't do that. I want to see why they said not to do it. But I remember getting in a car accident when I was outside of the will of God. And I remember the still small voice that said, I will remain faithful to you. Because guess what? I wasn't living the life for Christ. I wasn't living the way that I needed to be. And, and in a moment in that accident, I thought, this is it. 18 wheelers going to hit me. And I'll give you a little insight to the story. I was in a, a, a GMC Canyon, a little two-door GMC Canyon. See, I thought I bought myself a real truck, right? Come on now, GMC. Two-wheel drive, we're on the interstate, and there's just all kinds of snow. And I'm just going like I, I'm own, I own a truck. I'm just driving in the snow. I'm like, come on. I was living in Iowa. I'm from Maine. I know what it means to drive in snow. And I was passing everybody, and I was getting to an 18-wheeler. And all of a sudden, my vehicle lost traction. Wouldn't you believe it? Right in front of the 18-wheeler, I don't even know how I escaped. Didn't even get touched by any other vehicle. But my vehicle went and landed on the side of the road, about this far away from a mile marker sign. And I remembered in that time how God was so faithful to me despite me being faithful to Him. A lot of the times, we don't get those opportunities in life, do we? But it shows how loving God is and how He wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us. But I trust you've already turned to John chapter 15. We're going to start right in verse 1 this morning. It says, I am the true vine. Remember, this is Jesus talking. I am the true vine, and my Father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. In verse 3, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Throughout just those first four verses, if you can kind of read between the lines, it's saying remain in me, right? The, the mere definition of abide is actually to remain in. To remain in. And over time and time again, it gives us this picture of a vine dresser. I, I, I look at this picture as a florist. See, my mom was a florist when I was a kid. And I remember her going out to the garden. She had all those, you can laugh now, you can make fun of me. I, I don't know the names of the flowers because I wasn't a, a florist person. But she had them all hanging up and they're just so beautiful. But she would take them down. And she would start, in my opinion, ripping off petals. And I'd go, Mom, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right? After observing her, picking away at a couple of them already. By the time she was done, the, the flower that looked so full and, and good, you know, to my eye, because I didn't know what I was looking for, it became, it became so thinner. Right? There's a lot of things that was taken away. So I asked her, I said, what are you doing? She's like, I'm pruning the flowers. And I said, what does that mean? Well, taking away the dead parts from the flower, because if you don't, A, it loses the nutrients, but B, it also allows disease to 
come in. And see, I, a lot of the times I never knew why she said things in such a way, but, you know, it was almost like my parables that I could take from later. And she would equate it as how we are to have a relationship with Christ. See, there comes a time in our lives which brings us into point number one where God does certain things through circumstances, through events that occur, through relationships that we have or had. It's part of the pruning process. It is a necessity just as it kept the plants healthy, it keeps us healthy. Amen? It keeps us in check. It's, he, the awesome thing about the vine dresser and the vine, see, so you see a symbolic representation right there about the relationship that the vine dresser has to the vine. And in verse 2, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. In verse 3, again, I'll read, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. See, is it just me or does it seem like sometimes when we get pruned, it seems like we're in a bad area with God. Like, God, what are you doing to me? Why are you picking on me? But I believe I'm here to tell somebody this morning, he's not pruning you. He's not picking on you, but he is perfecting you. And I'm also reminded of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. The Apostle Paul is found saying, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. See, we've looked at time and time again that Apostle Paul really was on to something, right? Could you ever just be like, oh yeah, it's persecution. Come on. Everybody just hate on me for a while because I know God's going to provide me strength. That's basically what I see the Apostle Paul doing, but he understood something that we may sometimes forget. And it picks up in verse 10. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Apostle Paul was saying in times and circumstances, when I'm weak, guess what? I've learned in my relationship with Christ. I don't have to be strong because when I am weak, he is strong for me. But I feel like, and this could be a challenge for today, or this could be a, a direct statement that somebody needs to hear in the room this morning. But I feel like it's sometimes our job we feel like it's sometimes our job to hold everything together. See, I come from a family of seven brothers and four sisters, a mom and a dad. What, that's 14 people right there, right? How many ever felt like, hey, it's my job to hold my family together. It's my job to hold, come on, everything together. But when re in reality, God is saying, that was never your job. That's not your job. And this morning, as we will continue to look, well, we're going to look at, you got the easiest job, so to speak, right? But to abide in him is your job. Your job is to remain in him. Your job is to hold on to his hand. Hold on to the rope. I'm getting there. Don't get ahead of me, Dana. Hold on to his hand. And he wants to lead you through. 
When we abide in Him, and that word abide, I'll just kind of break it down, means to remain in Him, and we ask the question, well, how can we remain in Him? Open up your word. Read your Bible. Pray. Make prayer a priority in your life, and that's how you can get all the things that He wants you to get. It provides nutrition for our spiritual man. Did you know that these water sacks is not what we're taking to heaven? Somebody know that? Right? What we, you see, we don't take that to heaven. What does the Bible say? He's going to give us an incorruptible body. See, these bodies are just corruptible. But there's a spirit man that lives inside all of us that we need to build up. We need to strengthen. And how do we strengthen our spirit man? Well, I'll just say this. How do, you, how do you strengthen your physical man? Right? Nobody wants to say it. By exercising. Right? I, I know. I had that same, I had that same reaction. <laughs> Ethan and I always talk about joining a gym. And I think it's better than talking about it than actually joining the gym because we haven't joined it yet. <laughs> I say, I'm in shape. I'm round. That's a shape. But the also the reminder that we have today when God is pruning each and every one of us is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12. The Lord corrects those he loves. Just as the father corrects a child in whom he delights. I know I'll be the first to say I love every single one of my kids. Sometimes <laughs> right? you're waiting for that. No, I love every single one of my kids. Do I love it when they're naughty? No. Right. But when we take care of business, when we when we use that as a teaching point for our kids to say, hey, this is not how we should act. Let's act this way next time. OK, let's move forward. Right. We get that behind us. And that's the same thing that God does to each and every one of us. Has God ever said, hey, I don't like it when you do that. Yeah. Right. I don't I don't like I don't like the fact that you went you know, maybe went to that place or you said that joke in front of that person. But when he corrects you like that, it means he loves you. And he's just uh, giving you time to say, you know what? You're absolutely right. I'm not going to do that next time. And you learn from your mistakes. As we continue reading, let's pick up in verse 5. It says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. See, the way that I look at that scripture, without him, I can do nothing. But with him, I can do everything. Amen? If you abide in the vine, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. When I am weak. No, wait, is that no, that's not Philippians 4, 13, is it? I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can do all things, right? And that's what the assumption that you're connected inside the vine. You can do all things. Has anybody ever told you that before, right? Maybe a few people in your life that's really reliable, that really wants you to succeed in life. You can do whatever you set your mind to. You can accomplish Whatever. And if nobody ever has said that to you this morning, God is saying that to you this morning. Abide in me and guess what? Whatever you put your mind to, I will bless it. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it to the glory of God. Whatever I give you, know that you're blessed and bless someone else. I believe everybody has a gift from God. Everybody, when you are born into this world, you're born with gifts that God wanted you to have specifically. How awesome is that? Because if you understand, when we come into a setting like this, you may have a gift that somebody else does not have. And that you're able to give encouragement where somebody else might seem to be doom and gloom, right? Help me, Jesus. 
But there's another person that will always come alongside of you that you have to be aware of because he'll whisper things in your ear. Oh, you can't do this. You're never going to succeed. You're not going to amount to anything. And that person is the devil. And we have to guard ourselves against that because he gets clever. He'll tell you in different ways. He says the same thing, but in different ways. He's just like a lawyer. Help me now, right? Says the same thing, but in different ways. He makes it sound appealing. See, if we go back to Genesis, topic of discussion, riding to the funeral yesterday with my wife and I, was Adam and Eve. And Malia said, you know, it really wasn't the girl's fault. And I'm like, I've never preached it that way. I never preached it was the girl's fault. And which led me on to a good 10 minute rant. About, you know what, if it's just as the man's fault, then it was the woman's because God put the man over the woman. Right? Help me, Jesus. And she's like, all right, all right. I said, you got to sit on a couple more sermons there, sweetie. <laughs> I want it. Don't, don't you be fooled. I won that one. But getting back to the point, the reason why it sounded so good for Eve to take the bite and then present it to Adam was because the devil got trickier with how he really made it appealing, right? And that's what he does in our lives. Oh, it's not going to, you're not going to die. Take a bite. I'll show you, you're not going to die. Like count 30 seconds, you're not going to die, right? But the death that was talked about in Genesis was the spiritual death that would occur where they knew that they were not, or I'd say they knew they were naked, Right? We see that right in Scripture. They knew their faults. They knew what was good and what was evil. But I say all that to say this. In Him, you can't fail. Allow each day to be a new day. Maybe you're here this morning like, you know what? I said to myself last week in church that I was going to pray more, that I was going to read more. Don't beat yourself up over what you can't change. Start today and make it better moving forward. Abide in the vine. And there's blessing that flows when you abide in the vine. As I said earlier, nutrients is provided by the root system. Amen? When you abide in Him, there's something that comes up through. And there's these things called fruits that bloom. Does anybody want fruits in their life? Fruits that is going to show other people, hey, you know what? They got something different. There's something about them. I can't put my finger on it. But they're just different. And we'll read verse 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and they throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done to you or for you. Doesn't that sound like a good deal? Doesn't that sound like a good blessing to have? Any, anything? See, as a, as a new believer in Christ, Right when I read that verse, I, that was my favorite verse. Forget all the other verses, that became my favorite verse. But when you start abiding in the vine, all your desires, right? All the desires that you thought were good desires or desires that you had starts washing away. And the more time that you spend with Jesus, the more your desires align up with his desires, which means when you ask Jesus, you're asking according to his will. And when it's according to his will, he's going to answer it. Isn't that a place where you want to be this morning? Inside the will of God. And we look at verse 8. By doing all this, by living a life in the vine. By allowing your life. To stay connected to a stronger source than yourself. 
By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Do you know that's who you are this morning? That's who God sees you to be this morning as his, one of his disciples. You remember Jesus, right? When he walked this earth, he picked out, you know, I always say the lucky 12 men. Man, if I would have been there, I would have been better like, you know, better off than Peter, right? Or whatever. We always kind of put ourselves into that situation. But you are a disciple now. See, I always, I always wish, hey, I wish I was born back then so I could have just seen Jesus. But you know what? We can see Jesus now in all that we do. So the third question that I have, is God being glorified with your life? Is God being glorified with your life? Is there fruit that's being produced as a result of coming to church week after week? Is there a perfecting process that's being or taking place? I want to remind you of 2 John 1 9, not to be mistaken with 1 John 1 9, but 2 John 1 9 says, Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teachings of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. 1 John 4 13. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us because He has given us of His Spirit. See, a lot of the times when, I'll just say, a lot of the times when I read John chapter 15, it gives me the sense of, man, i got to be you know, putting myself right in the vine. Or i got to be doing it in my own work. And yes, there's work on our part that needs to be done. But isn't it awesome at salvation that He gives you His Holy Spirit? He gives you His Spirit to guide you, to lead you, to perfect you. Because I tell you what, if, if He did not give us His Spirit, I wouldn't be where I was, am today. It's His Spirit that constantly is tapping on your shoulder, is bugging you, saying, hey, come back. Come back. You're going a little too far. Come back. It's His Spirit that's going to guide you and teach you. It's His Spirit that comforts you. Has anybody ever been in a time where you needed comforting and you felt His Spirit just wrap around you like a blanket? I pray if you have, and I pray one day that you do experience the tangible touch of God. But as we equate back to the anchor, see, uh, you're wondering how I was going to tie this in with the anchor. A lot of the times, and all that was said, when I relate it to an anchor, we're like this. All right, I'm going to put my anchor there. I'm going to come back for you, anchor, when I need you. Right? And if that is a symbolic representation of Jesus, that's a depiction of how a lot of people live in this world around us. Well, I'm only going to hold on to you when I feel like it's going to benefit me. I'm going to go back to the anchor if I need something. But for the meantime, I, I'm just going to leave that anchor there knowing where I've left it. Knowing it's going to be there when I get back. When in reality, God wants you to hold on to this anchor. And see, I'll tell you a little bit. Of, I'll tell you another secret about me. You'll know two secrets about me today. That's not secrets no more. I, oh, I can't tie a rope. That's one secret. But the other secret is I hate swimming. I absolutely hate swimming. See, when, whenever I'm swimming, it's in a pool that at the most it's eight feet. And so I, I really believe my wife that, you know, I stay on her good side. That way she can rescue me if I start going under. Help me, Malia. Right? But so the way that I would... Hold on to this anchor. If I was out in the boat, is I'd tie this puppy all around me like this, right? Because I don't want to go nowhere. I want the security of the rope 
all around me. I don't want just a knot. Come on, I want it all looped around and tied. Be like, Pastor Zach, if you go overboard, you're getting strangled. At least I'm holding on to the anchor, right? But you understand what I'm saying. In our spiritual life, I pray that we just want him wrapped around us in all that we do. I pray that when you leave this place, you're saying, come on, I need more of you, Lord, and less of me. I need you to wrap your loving arms around me this morning. Maybe you haven't felt a touch from God in a while. Maybe there's tears that you're holding back because there's feelings that you don't want to deal with right now. See, I was told growing up, men don't cry. Men don't cry. And I found to be true the biggest lie. The biggest lie. Because when a grown man cries, it's reflecting the image of Christ even more. He's allowing those feelings to be expressed, but he's also allowing somebody to comfort him. And it was my wife that said, come on, you can cry. You can cry. I'm like, I don't think I've cried for like five years. I don't know that I can, right? But if nothing else, I thank the Lord for my wife and for the family that he has put in my life. Because like I said last week, everything happens for a reason. There's no coincidences. And she's been the perfect, I'd say, to use this word lightly, perfect helpmate. You can tell her after service, it says something nice about her. <laughs> right? But I want to read you a testimony of King David found in Psalm chapter 34 in closing to provide encouragement. But it says in verse 4, I sought the Lord. And he heard me. Doesn't it feel nice to be heard from time to time? A lot of the time, you know, I've been, I'll just say this. I've been in situations where I'm like, God, are, do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear the cry that's on my heart? Do you see the circumstance that I'm going from? And I'd always get a response back. I hear you. I'm working on it. And so didn't David. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Not only did he hear me, but he delivered me from all my fears. They looked at him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers him. <laughs> isn't, isn't that encouraging though having the angels of the Lord encamped all around those who fear him so I say this morning let's fear him together let's allow the angels to surround us provide protection so Father God as you come Father God we thank you Lord for the challenge that was really gone out this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for the areas in which we can better our life in. And Father, as we just continue to abide in you, as we continue just to live this life so pleasing before your sight, Father, I just pray that you just take time for us to reflect on this message this afternoon so we can correct the areas in our life that we may need correction on. But Father, this morning, we just want to get so close to your heart. We want to know how you want us to live this life. How we can be pleasing to you. How we can share your testimonies. The testimonies that are personal to us with somebody else. And Lord, as we just spend some time seeking you, I pray, Lord God, that you just show up to the person that needs you most. Give them the comfort that they need this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. The altars are open this morning. If you need, do need some time of prayer and would like somebody to agree with you on, that's what I'm here for. I believe with God all things are possible. I believe any situation in your life that you're facing, that He can align it, amen? Do we believe that this morning?
Pastor was preaching. for coming out this morning and I trust I see you tonight at 6 p.m. for our praise and worship night and if there's anything that you need during the week you're more than welcome to call me on my cell phone um, and I just want you to know that you're loved and that you're blessed amen amen, amen. you're dismissed